visited Gunma Prefecture's Kiryu City, which is near the central part of Japan. Hello, I'm Michelle. This is a cloth called Furoshiki. It is used in Japan to carry and to wrap things since very long ago. And this piece of cloth is said to have evolved thanks to an innovative technology. Let's go and find out what it's like. Hello, I'm Michelle. Hello, thank you for coming. I'm Kogure. Yasuo Kogure has been engaged in research on advanced furoshiki cloth technology for 20 years. The origins of furoshiki wrapping cloth date back about 1,200 years. Furoshiki started to become widely used around 150 years ago. A furoshiki is a one meter square cloth commonly used to wrap gifts or other items. I heard that there are furoshiki here, which are different from others. Here is one of those furoshiki. Please try feeling it. It feels nice and smooth. It doesn't seem that different from an ordinary furoshiki. At first glance, it looks like an ordinary furoshiki. But after you pour some water on it... Whoa! The water droplets are rolling down in little balls. Why does the water roll off like this? The water droplets are beating up like gleaming gems. The cloth is processed to be water repellent, but that's not all. If you tie the cloth and make it into a bag, even when 10 liters of water are poured in, it will not leak a drop of water. But if you squeeze it hard, <laughs> it's like a shower. How beautiful! Water sprays out from the cloth. What kind of technology was used to make this amazing fabric? Normally, the surface of a textile with a waterproof finish is covered with resin. But the Takumi's furoshiki is different. Let's look at the Takumi's fabric microscopically. This is how the fabric looks after it is treated with a water repellent finish. You can see the fine threads. This shows that the thread is treated to repel water. There are spaces between the threads, so when the furoshiki is squeezed and pressure is applied, the water sprays out. The technology simultaneously allows for both a water repellent finish and air permeability. This water repellent treatment uses fluorocarbon. the length of time it is soaked in an agent containing fluorocarbon and the temperature in which it is dried are what make the difference in the finished product. But the Takumi had to face a big challenge. In 2015, environmental pollution controls coming into effect meant that fluorocarbon could no longer be used. This is the chemical formula of the conventional fluorocarbon. But because this could no longer be used, the Takumi had to use fluorocarbon with less carbon content. The fluorocarbon with less carbon content could not be fixed to the fabric securely, and the water repellency did not last long. So the Takumi worked on a combination of chemical agents. 
He changed the types and the combinations of the resins used to fix the fluorocarbon onto the fabric and to enhance durability. The Takumi tried more than 1,000 combinations over two years of trial and error until he succeeded in developing a furoshiki that was durable. There is a water repellent agent inside here. The fabric goes through this for water repellent treatment. The Takumi's technique is now widely used in many fields. This is an air permeable raincoat. It has been well received because it doesn't feel stuffy inside when worn in the rain. The sleeve protector here has a soft cuff and a pleasant feel that keeps you dry when doing the dishes. The Takumi is still hoping to further develop his water repellent technology. I want to preserve the durability while retaining the texture of fabrics that are not treated with water repellent agents. That's what I'm aiming for. Today, I brought in some of the furoshiki that the Takumi developed. Please try and touch the fabric. They're very pretty, and it looks and feels just like a regular furoshiki. Since it's thin and not very bulky, it could be used as a rain cover for a business bag. Great idea. And now we can do a little test. So please try to pour some water onto the fabric. Really? Let me hold it the fabric. Okay, it takes a little courage to pour water in fabric, but here we go. Did you hear that? <laughs> oh, it's dry. Mm -hmm. The furoshiki is holding the water in. Can I try squeezing the water out? Please do. Please. Okay, here we go. See if I can squeeze some. Do you see the ripples? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not enough water, but yeah. And if I stop squeezing, the water stops coming out. There's still water inside the furoshiki. The Takumi is also involved in manufacturing competitive swimwear. The swimwear combines various cloth materials that have elasticity to help support the athlete's swimming position, while its water repellency makes use of the Takumi's technology. It has been used in swimwear worn by Olympic athletes since the 1980s and has also helped them win many medals. It seems like a technology that could be applied in many situations where water is used. The Takumi's future research looks promising. Yes, thank you very much, Michelle. So, Dr. Sato, how would you wrap up today's program? Our topic was drug repositioning. This concept of applying existing drugs to a different disease rather than developing a completely new drug is something that may be useful to other research areas as well. Thank you, Dr. Sato. And that's all for Science View. We hope to see you next time. <laughs>